are these people? Well, I, we've been having this on the on the back burner, this story for a minute, um, and I figured it was uh, it was time because a few of our brothers and sisters made some unusual statements, especially after Macklemore's uh, song came out. So I figured we we pull both these together. So, um, you know, we have we have Anya here. Macklemore claims APAC and Kofi are part of a system of white supremacy. First of all, bro, you're white. Second of all, those groups don't exist to promote white supremacy. Israel is not based on white supremacy. It's based on Zionism. Anya, I don't know if you know, but those are kind of the same thing. You know? Yeah. So, it's in the, you can it, make... It's in the umbrella. It's in the spectrum. Yeah. Well, it's... it's I, I think her point... I think her point was that they hate more than just, like, they hate other white people. And it's like, I, I hate to tell you, but as a person who got those KKK flyers, those white supremacists, they hate other white people, too. You know? Like, right. like that's how this works. Don't forget, it's, like, KKK, they were Protestants. They hated Catholics. Yes. So. And Irish and Italians and Jews and, you know. And Slavs. Basically, anyone <laughs> yeah. who is not anyone who wasn't basically Southern anyone who white is not Baptist. Western European, yeah, more or less, yeah. If you so, were British or French, they hated your guts. So, same thing with the Zionists, seeing how most of them are Europeans to begin with, um, especially now. So, we weren't the only ones saying this kind of stuff, right? But she continues, Zionists love that pro-Palestinian students. Think the problem is white supremacy and the Chad frat boys feel like everyone believes they are the problem. In the meantime, Zionists squander the future of both these student groups to keep us all divided. I get where you're going. Just unnecessary, Anya, I feel like. Yeah. You know? So like I don't I don't care what those other people think of my white supremacy labeling on white supremacy. Like I don't as, the optics. As, what do you say? What don't do you, matter in what that do you regard. Say, what do um, you say at the end of our show every lab, week? Lab, labels are bad, um, <laughs> because they are because they can be co-opted and misinterpreted and whatever. Like I feel you. Trust me, Anya, I feel you. But um, Jay Buffont, we want more white people to call out white supremacy. That's how you help change the system. Also, Zionism is part of white supremacy. Need we remind you of how Zionists treat Ethiopian Jews? This guy, Colin, right. says, uh, Max, come get your girl. Zionism is a branch of white supremacy. Kimber Maddox, Zionism is a white supremacist ideology. There's a reason so many non-Jewish white Americans support it. Regardless, I'm curious why you believe white people can call, can't call call out white supremacy. That makes absolutely no sense. No, no, no sense. <laughs> but that's the thing. And that's why I was sharing with you before we went live. This yeah. whole thread. Yeah. Because she went in all yeah. through today on this subject. This uh -huh. was all stemmed from Macklemore of yeah. all things. And I'm, she I'm this one to on remember. Separate... I'm one to remember, Colin, when the Gray Zone was you know, praising praising the likes of Oliver Anthony for weeks. I got blocked by a guy because of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, where's him? Where's he being white? Where's Roger Waters being white supporting Macklemore on this? How much money he give the gray zone? I mean, if we're going to talk, right. like, where's, he's speaking about Palestine too, calling it white supremacist. Where's your, where's your ire over that? Right. Like, right, and even I feel within you. another, right, but even within another thing, yeah, Anya was like, "Oh, well, we need white people." I think she might have saw JB Street and tried to backpedal a little, it back a bit, possibly. Yeah. Like, but she was like, "Oh, we need white people to call out Zionism." Then why are you fucking around on Macklemore for? Yeah, like so... I just feel that there was a lot more to what she might have been thinking in her head. Before she tweeted it out, like friend of the show, Nico um, House. I don't know enough about Kofi, but I know enough about APAC to know their existence has zero to do with protecting African Black Jews, even though they pay off a few Black politicians. So he's definitely onto something that they're here to uplift and promote the superiority of a specific type of Zionist. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, there's race is absolutely part and the beginning of this problem. So well, she replies class. to class. She replies to Nico. Yes. Well, this is chicken and egg, right? Is it class? Is it racism? Right, yeah, it's right. kind of the same right. thing all the time. So she writes, those are two U.S. orgs that exist to influence the U.S. on behalf of Israel and Zionism. Bill Ackman is a Zionist donor, not a white supremacist donor. I would argue you could claim that, though, can't you? You know, Zionist privilege does not extend to all whites, and not all white people can make ayah. And Zionists have non-Zionist white Christians, hate non-Zionist white Christians. And yes, the Europeans who founded Israel don't view black Jews as equal because they invented a narrative that places all of us, black, brown, or white, below them. Just like any other white supremacist group, Anya, they all do that. Right. Like, it's us versus them mentality. That's how it starts. So, let's go right. back, Colin. Let's take it back. When was this published in Consortium News? Originally published November 28th of oh. 2012. Something wrong, damn date. Yeah. That's how far it goes back. Okay. They republished this like a couple weeks ago. Right? A month. Right. Last so this is by Lawrence Davidson, who writes Origins of Israel's Anti Arab Racism. The anti Arab racism that pervades modern Israel can be traced back to attitudes of old European imperialism, argued Lawrence Davidson in 2012, in this prescient forecast of today's Israeli genocide, okay? So, we're going to start here. We're going to go way back to the middle of the 19th century. The multi-ethnic empire was on its way out as the dominant political paradigm in Europe, replacing it with the nation-state, a political form which allowed the concentration of ethnic groups within their own political borders. This, in turn, formed cultural and racial incubators for an us superior versus them inferior nationalism that would underpin most of the west's future wars many of these nation states were also imperial powers expanding across the globe and of course their state-based chauvinistic outlook went with them do i hear manifest destiny in the chat anyone yes and what it what it did to yes. the native populations here um right and I don't know, Africa, India, uh, any of those things, right? So, again, the multi ethnic empire was on its way out, right? We wanted Europeans controlling things, right? So, this guy, Hungarian Theodore Herzl, you, you heard of this guy? Um, well, yes, we have. With, with his lovely I beard have. and mustache. Um, so, Zionism was born in the milieu of nationalism and imperialism, both of which left an incredible mark on the character and ambitions of the Israeli state. The conviction of none other than Theodore Herzl, modern Zionism's founding father, was that the centuries of anti-Semitism were proof positive that Europe's Jews could not be assimilated into mainstream Western society. They could not only be safe if they possessed a nation state of their own, right? That was his. They could always his, say it. Yes. Right. So this was in turn when we were hearing that members of his own Hungarian people that they were saying the Palestinians should go, the, the Jews should go to Palestine. Get out. Pretty much. Right. Well, as well as out. <laughs> Nazis also said the same thing. Right. So this conversation also reflected the European imperial sentiments of the day. It's, it's like the Nazis. They also didn't like other white people. I don't know if you remember, you know, like right. it wasn't just, you know, Jews they hated. Um, right. They hated Slavs, I believe. They hated yep. Poles, Gypsies, Russians for sure. Poles. You know, okay. so yeah. This conviction also reflected the European imperial sentiments of the day. The founders of modern Zionism were both Jews and Europeans, and as such had acquired the West's cultural sense of superiority in relation to non-Europeans. The sense of superiority would play an important role when a deal, the Balfour Declaration, was struck in 1917 between the World Zionist Org and the British government. The deal stipulated that in exchange 
for Zionist support for the British war effort, World War I was in progress, the British would, assuming victory, help create a Jewish national home in Palestine. There was no and oversight. we talked about this. Yeah. Right. Sorry. We talked about this. The re- that's the reason what that, because the Zionists had the money. Yes. Uh, and the British needed to ensure that they win, they won the war. Because yeah. their funding was running out. So that was what was done in exchange, was yeah. you fund us to make sure we win this, and we'll give you the land that you want. Right. So... In Palestine, it was no oversight that neither side in this bargain gave much thought to the Palestinians' native population. Years later, beginning in 1945, at the end of World War II, the British were forced to officially give up their imperial point of view. They came out of the war with a population burdened by extraordinary high war taxes. Retaining the empire would keep those taxes high, and so the British voter elected politicians who would transform the empire into a commonwealth, granting independence to just about all Britain's overseas territories. One of those territories was what? Palestine. It is interesting to note that in other European colonies, where large numbers of Europeans resided, the era following World War II saw their eventual evacuation as power shifted over to the natives. Kenya and Algeria are examples which show that this process was hard and bloody, but it happened. And when it did happen, the official imperial mindset was defeated. That does not mean that all Europeans saw the light and ceased to be racist. But their government eventually saw the necessity to stop acting that way. Unfortunately, in the case of Palestine, the process of decolonization never occurred. In this case, the European colonists did not want the imperial mother country to stay and protect them. They wanted them out so they could set up shop of their own. They got their chance after the British evacuated in 1947. Soon thereafter, the Zionists began executing a prepared plan to conquer the Holy Land and chase away or subjugate native population. And what of the imperial point of view, which saw the European as superior and the native as inferior, this became institutionalized in the practices of the new Israeli state. That made Israel one of the very few, the other being apartheid South Africa, self-identified Western nation states to continue to implement old-style imperial policy. They discriminated against the Palestinian population in every way imaginable, pushed them into enclosed areas of concentration, and sought to control their lives in great detail. One wants to know what this meant for the evolving character of Israel's citizenry, who now would live out the colonial drama as an imperial power in their own right. One might take a look at the book by Sven Lindvist entitled Exterminate All the Brutes, New Press, 1996. This work convincingly shows that lording it over, often resisting native peoples, debasing and humiliating them, regularly killing or otherwise punishing them when they protest, leads the colonials to develop genocidal yearnings. There is evidence that the Zionists who created and now sustain Israel suffer from this process. For a long time, Israeli government officials tried genocide via a thought experiment. They went about asserting that the Palestinians did not exist. The most famous case of this was Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir, who on June 15, 1969, claimed that there were no such thing as Palestinians. They do not exist. One of the reasons she gave for this option was that the Arabs of Palestine never had their own nation state, which is just wrong. Um, Others took a different approach by denying not so much the existence of Palestinians, but rather their humanity. At various times and in various contexts, usually in response to acts of resistance against occupation, Israeli leaders have referred to the Palestinians as beasts walking on two legs. That's Meneshem Begin, right? Grasshoppers. Yitchika Shamir, Crocodiles, Ehud Barak, and Cockroaches, Rafal Aitan. We've heard these very many times um, in regards to these things. So, of course, these sentiments were not confined to the Israeli leadership. They soon pervaded most of the Zionist population because the old imperial superiority and purity propaganda had become a core element of their base education. The Israelis have taught their children the important point of view, augmented it with biased media reporting. 
Yes. What did I say? Hopefully not impartial. Um, the imperial point of view yes. augmented it with biased media reporting, labeled the inevitable resistance offered by the Palestinians as anti-Semitism, and took it as proof of the need to suppress and control the population of others. And we've talked about what they teach their children on this show before. What, what do we call that segment? Do you remember? I forget. I brought it. Um, um, sure. But anyway, I it's somewhere on the that. channel. Um, so, and from the Zionist standpoint, this entire process oh, has it's worked. The, it's, oh, it's the education one. One of okay. the education ones. I, forget, yep. I know it's education. Something like that. Right. So yeah, this entire process has worked remarkably well today. All but a handful of Israeli Jews dislike and fear the people they conquered and displaced. They wish they would go away. And when the resistance was just a bit too much to bear, they are now quite willing to see them put out of the way. Thus, during the latest, this was in 2012, round of resistance rocket fire from Gaza and the vengeful killing that came from the Israeli side. We heard the ball. Oh, but, 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 Reef, but, Reef. I know, uh, October 7th, I, I know. Everything, I, I thought everything started in <laughs> October 7th. October 7th. Of it's last like, year. Yeah, last year. It was the only time. Um. So again, 2012, right? They said, we must blow Gaza back to the Middle Ages, destroying all the infrastructure, including roads and water. Colin, what are they doing now? Just that. Yeah. So they 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 continued there should be no electricity in Gaza, no gasoline or moving vehicles, nothing. We need to flatten entire neighborhoods, <laughs> flatten all of Gaza. <laughs> Journalist Jalad Sharon in the Jerusalem Post. I mean, it's it's just as if they manifested Planned everything this? that they spoke into yeah. existence that is happening <laughs> right now. Yeah. Uh, so members of the Knesset, there are no innocents in Gaza. Mow them down, kill the Gazans without thought or mercy. Again, 2012. Gaza should be bombed so hard the population has to flee to Egypt. Israel Katz, present minister of transportation. Gaza should be wiped clean with bombs. Avi Ditcher, present minister of home front defense. Israel soldiers must learn from the Syrians how to slaughter the enemy. Prominent Israeli rabbi Yaakov Yosef. Finally, there were the numerous spontaneous demonstrations of ordinary Israeli citizens, both in the north and south of the country, where it could be heard chants and shouts such as, they don't deserve to live, they need to die, may your children die, kick out all the Arabs. Honestly, Reef, uh -huh. that should be a short. Yeah, all of that part right there should be a short because yep. it makes it because it gives credence to what people have been saying regarding how Palestinians have been viewed this whole time that people are either in denial or just paying straight up lying. Yeah, about but this is people within government. Mm -hmm. is saying this, you know? And so, like, kind of going back to Anya's thing, yeah. like, because the argument that I was making with her is that Zionism is not necessarily a religious beyond, uh, ideology per se. Like, Herschel was not, he was an atheist, according to many things. So it's like, you all can argue, and definitely back then, it was yeah. more political. It was based on imperialism and capital. Yeah. Like Zionists had the money. They wanted the had the money and wanted to retake Palestine over, but they used Judaism mm -hmm. as a means to do that. So yeah. you know, so for me it's just like I have a hard time even saying. Jewish supremacy in a sense because mm -hmm. it gives the idea seemingly that all Jews think this way, which we know is definitely not the case. Yep. But 
it does fall in line in what can be said under white supremacy in terms of you know that shield that you can have like again you know but generally for european jews you don't have to say you're jewish right mm -hmm. like you don't necessarily have to bend your identity based on the fact that you're Jewish unless you say so. Like, I, me, this, I don't have that, I don't have that shield. You know, it's very obvious what I am. Yeah. And from that, I'm already identified as inferior. Mm -hmm. Like, Jews in this day and age don't have to go through that necessarily unless they have more melanin. And yeah. even then, that's not even a guarantee for them, you know, no. even if they're Jewish. So no. it's the willingness to play ball with the systematic institution that is mm -hmm. white supremacy. That is the problem. Yes. That's the issue that I had with Anya calling it Jewish supremacy. So, it's, it, um, it is that, but it's to a larger degree within that scope, within that spectrum of using that institution as a means to get what you want. It's just a matter of them using the religion to hijack it in a way that to you know justify about, their rules. You know about taxonomy? You, you, you've, you've done mm -hmm. some, right? The, cl the, the classification of living things, right? You know, you got your order, yep. phylum, species, all that stuff, right? So <laughs> my mother's right. a biologist, right? has been doing this in the field for a long time. There are two, right, groups in taxonomy, lumpers and separators, right? So like, let's say you find a new species of shrimp, right? Do you lump it in with a previous species, right? Or do you separate it as a new species? That was, I think, what Anya was dealing with was like, do I separate right. this as something separate? Or do I lump it in with white supremacy, even though that's what it is? Like, or do I try to separate it because it is different? Like, I, I, right. I get the argument in your head, just not needed, you know? It, I, I, so, and I, as you said, it, it, it's not so different compared to Nazism. Yep. Um, Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Like, it's the idea of su superiority, and in this case, over people of color to justify, you know, them overtaking you because they you, they essentially think of you as a less than. So mm -hmm. it's that European mindset of literally it kind of the, along the lines of Rene Descartes, I think, therefore I am type deal. Yeah. Like, um, you know, um, like my presence as this white person is more significant than yours yeah as a person of color um so yeah I, I yeah i mean i i get what she was trying to do yeah but it kind of fell flat but again it kind of fell flat as to the reason why right like because i guess this was i get you feeling why you feel like that's dismissive and i also anya see you Underneath people saying that burning the American flag is just, yes, it is. And do you know why? Because there's a lot of us who are anti American at this point. We do not like what our country is doing. Like, we just don't. We live here. It doesn't mean we are completely patriotic, whatever. And if anyone wants to argue with me on it, feel free. I will give you a long list of why you should not be happy about our country. Like, uh, you know, that scroll is going to be pretty fucking long. So if people are out here wanting to burn the fucking flag, I get that shit. I completely understand that shit. You know, so, like, I get why you feel like optics are important, but I think the optics of dead babies is a lot more prevalent and a lot more right. of a problem. So, you know, like, I while I get you, you know, I feel like you're tone policing and it's unnecessary. Um, but mm -hmm. back to this article from 2012, uh, if it wasn't for the fact the outside world was watching, and this is 
funny paragraph because we now know better, right? Um, if it wasn't for the fact that the outside world was watching, there can be little doubt that the famed Israeli armed forces would have been tempted to do all that these ministers, clerics, and citizens wished, which they are now doing, with us watching. Um, today, look in a paragraph, today the outside world is having little effect on Western government support for the ongoing genocide. After Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu agreed to a ceasefire in 2012, <coughs> you're wondering why he didn't do one now, right? Um, so a group of Israeli soldiers showed their frustration by using their bodies to spell out in Hebrew the words BB loser, right? It was a prearranged photo op, and the picture can now easily be found on the web. What seems to really irk the Israeli citizenry is not that Bibi killed and maimed too many innocent civilians, but rather that he did not kill and maim enough of them to grant Israelis safety and security. <coughs> so, you know, here you go. Soldiers spell out, PM mm -hmm. is a loser. So, you know, I think that's why they're, you know, we, why, why we're pushed to blame Bibi in this, right? So, you know, and his own people will be pushed into that, and they'll blame him, especially if he votes for a ceasefire, right? So, throughout history, it has been standard operating procedure to demonize those you fight and demote to inferior status those you conquer. But as Linkivit's work shows, there was something different about the way Europeans went about this. The deeply racist outlook that underlay modern imperialism made it particularly perverse. Now that apartheid right. South Africa is no more, the Israelis are the last surviving heirs to that dreadful heritage. So much for a light onto the nations that proposition has quite failed. Wherever the Israelis and their Zionist cohorts are leading us, it is not into the light. It is to some place very, very dark. And we're now in that darkness. So any closing thoughts before we head out? Of this segment? Well, again, I'm glad. Thank you for bringing that article, but I think it's just a reminder, you know, just as far as where Zionism came from. Like, this is coming from the continent that, like, put my ancestors in chains. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like the idea that, like, the idea that these European, like, this is, and this is all kind of building upon capitalism at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you know, like, you know, the issue with slavery, you know, in the West is that it became a business. See, that's what I'm kind of simplifying it, but basically that's what it was. Like, people argue, oh, like, Arabs had slaves and, like, people had slaves. Yes, but that yeah, was more every in culture in I the mentioned this on fucking the planet tour. had Every them. culture had, but then you can argue that was more or less of, of indentured servitude. That was well, when, like, you conquered. Yes. People like it was and then war. You just it was spoils of needed. war. Right. Like you so, took the able-bodied men you know, that you conquered, and they then worked for you. Like worked for you, right? Like yeah, but in a lot of these cases. But when when, when then that became a business, that's when things became a problem. So right, for, right, like, profit, like yeah. not. For them, not for me or like my family or like, you know, for Ados or whatever, like, or within the diaspora. So yeah. this is so, but again, this is kind of like the seeds of what was Zionism stem from this idea. Yeah. So, you know, whether you not like you, right. And that's what I think people should realize is that this is what Zionism is based upon. Is it based upon a lot of these ideas that essentially, you know, like brought black people to the West on account of slavery or account, as you kind of alluded to, Native Americans essentially been genocided off, you yeah. know, in the name of manifest destiny, you know, or like in the name of religious freedom, like for the pilgrims or whatever, you know, it's like, what we're currently seeing now, like um, in Papua, New was it Papua New Guinea? Um, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you did a story Still about ongoing. that. I think over a year ago. Yep. Still Paradise ongoing Bond. right now, which no one is even talking about that either. 
Yeah. You know, so but these are all based upon the ideas and like kind of like from the Enlightenment era within the West in terms of basically white people feeling themselves mm -hmm. and then just being like, you know, I'm this, I'm hot shit and I yeah. can do whatever I want and fuck everybody else. And the issue that I have with this in terms of Judaism or basically all the Abrahamic religions at their core, if you're looking at it from a holistic, they're meant to be religions of peace. Mm -hmm. So, well, they're as the a whole, Jew. By the by, the way, Zionism in and of itself. You know, we 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 haven't really talked about this in general as far as how other Jews depict it in their right. teachings. They are not allowed to have a nation state until their Messiah shows. Right. Like that's but Zionism argued, no, we gotta have it before then. No, your book tells you that that's not the way this works. You know? So Right. But I think on a basic level, you know, if you're talking about a religion of peace, why you know, but you're kind of in me but you know, it's like so Intertwined Zionism at this point is somewhat intertwined with Judaism. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you want to be a part of a religion that is essentially, you know, giving carte blanche to the massacre of thousands of children in the name of quote unquote Judaism? In mm -hmm. the name of which it's not necessarily interpreted that way, but it can be. Like, what, why would you want to be a part of a religion like that if that's what essentially, like, in the leanings of a nation built around the religion? Like, yeah. that's what you want to be stood for? You mean, like, that's what the you Vatican? Want to be you mean, like, the Vatican? Yes. <laughs> because it is also one Same of those thing. religions. Yeah, Same like thing. All of them. Pick one. You know? What, what, that's why I'm saying, like, in a holistic view. But, yeah. like, how we, how we, you know, as human beings interpret that, like, we make a whole mess of it, yeah. you know? But th those are the conversations that I don't think people are necessarily having. Well, and even, is... even the fucking prominent atheists who should be on this shit, front, frontwards, backwards, sideways, have eaten up the propaganda on all this shit. So, you know, that's my issue. As a fucking atheist in the South, I've had plenty of these fucking battles over Christianity and its Zionism, right? Like, let alone, you know, that was Iraq war, that was Iran, that was Afghanistan. We were having those arguments. So, like, you know, th there's a lot of inconsistencies <coughs> when it comes to religion and that shit. So, you know, that's the way I feel about it. But, yeah, it's, I, I definitely wanted to bring this to cover a bit about, you know, we probably should do a, Thing on on Herschel himself, right? And yes, you know it's hard to find stuff that isn't completely propaganda on that guy. But you know, mm -hmm. we'll we'll look into that maybe, and the you know, uh, Russia's involvement with all that shit and things like that. But um, in the meantime, you know, talking about these things means we get demonetized and censored and suppressed. So. You know, if you could help us out by going to code-v.com slash indie news network and giving us the two dollars you would normally give to Starbucks that you're boycotting right now, you know, that would that would be nice. Scan that little QR code on your screen and, and give us a couple of dollar dues. We appreciate that. Um you know, but if you can't do that, very easy. Like, subscribe, share this with your friends. You know, we are heavily suppressed. The more you can get this to like minded people, the better. You know, leaving comments supposedly helps the algorithm, so do some of that too. Let us know what you think. But, you know, otherwise, go to alternative platforms to find us, which you can find at IndieNews.network. You can subscribe to our Rockin' and Rumble pages in case YouTube decides to completely boost us. Um, you can find us there. 